Precept Consultant, Megan Hudson. Today we are going to take a look inside of the parent-led textbook kit for the fourth edition of Science 6. We will be looking at the Science 6 Teacher Edition, the Science 6 Student Textbook, and then we will be looking at the Science 6 Student Activity Manual and the Answer Key. So join me as we take a look inside of these books. This is the Science 6 Teacher Edition. Science 6 is a full year course with 180 lessons. This book is split into six units. Those units are called A Changing Earth, God's Living Creation, Energy and Motion, Beyond Our Earth, God's Continuing Plan, and Our Intricate Bodies. Each unit is between two and three chapters. At the beginning of the TE, you will find a lot of information that would be good to read before you begin teaching this course. We're going to talk about a little bit of this information as we look at some example lessons in a few moments. I do want to point out this page called the Science Process Skills. Science Process Skills are words that we are going to use throughout Science 6, and these are action words. These are words that we are putting into practice as we are doing experiments and activities. They are words like hypothesizing, predicting, measuring, experimenting, observing, communicating. So these are words that we're going to practice often throughout Science 6 as we are doing those experiments throughout the year. At the beginning of this book, there is this section called Lesson Plan Overviews. There is a page or section in here for every single chapter in this book. Today I'm going to be focusing on chapter 8, so I'm going to flip through here to chapter 8 and I'm going to explain what all these different parts are. So chapter 8 tells me that this is called Electricity and Magnetism, and then in this first column here I can see the lesson numbers that are involved in this chapter. I also see which pages I will be on in my teacher edition book and which pages I'm going to assign in my student textbook. I also have the page numbers for the student activity manual pages. So this is where I usually go when I'm lesson planning because I can quickly see which pages I'm assigning both for my student textbook and my activity manual. I also get a little bit of an overview of my objectives for these lessons in this chapter and I have a list of which science process skills we're going to be focusing on in this chapter. I also can see from this list if I have an activity on a day, or if I have an exploration, or if I have a chapter review or a chapter test. So this is a good page to get an idea of what we're going to be doing overall in the chapter. So each chapter does have a section in this lesson plan overview. I'm now going to jump ahead. We're going to talk about chapter 8. So this is the beginning of chapter 8. In my TE, I actually have the pages for the student textbook embedded in my book. I see this 8 right here, which is how I know that this is the beginning of chapter 8 for my student. Since this is the first lesson of the chapter, I'm going to point out some key features that you're going to probably see at the beginning of every chapter. Every lesson number will be up here in the top corner. It also will list your student textbook page and your activity manual page for these lessons. And then your lesson will start out with an objective and an introduction. Now this introduction is a little bit different because it's the first day of a chapter. The introduction will be introducing the entire chapter. We would then have this Teach for Understanding section, which would be where we could have a conversation about what they just read on their page and start talking about what they're going to be learning about in this chapter. I do know that I've reached the end of the lesson on this day because I have this note here about the activity manual, and this would be the page I would be assigning my student to do out of their activity manual for the day. I also notice I have some information down here at the bottom. This is usually background information or activities. If it's background information, it's usually something you want to read before you begin teaching the lesson because then you can incorporate that information into your discussion as you are doing the Teach for Understanding section. Now let's look at lesson number 95. Up at the top I see the student textbook pages and the activity manual page that I will be assigning to my child. I also see the objectives and vocabulary words for today. 
and then see this introduction. This introduction will introduce what we're about to read about in our student textbook for the day. And after we've gone through that little discussion, they would read their assignment on their own. And then when they were finished, we'd come back and do this Teach for Understanding section in the Teacher's Edition. The Teach for Understanding section will provide me with some suggested questions that I could ask to make sure that my child understands what they read in their student textbook. I use this as a guide. I might add my own questions. I might not ask all of their questions, but I want to use this as a guide to make sure that I am hitting all the highlights with my child of what today's lesson was about. I do notice that there is some science background information down at the bottom, so I would have wanted to read this before I start teaching the lesson so that I can incorporate that into the Teach for Understanding section of the lesson. I do notice that this Teach for Understanding section actually lasts for a couple more pages, and I see this note here about the activity manual, which is how I know I've reached the end of the lesson for the day. One other thing to point out in here is this quick check question. These are built into your student textbook. These are questions that your child could answer on their own when they were done reading their assignment to make sure that they have an understanding of what they just read and to make sure they don't need to go back and look up any of the key pieces of information they just learned about. In this particular page, I also see that I have a demonstration that I would be doing with my child. These are always optional but they are good ways to provide enrichment through the lessons because it's always going to be related to something we are learning about in today's lesson. And this is a great way to practice those science process skills. So this is lesson number 96. Again, I see up at the top my student textbook pages and my activity manual pages, and I have my objectives materials list and my introduction and a teach for understanding section. But this is an activity that is built into your student textbook and into your student activity manual. These are the experiments you don't want to skip. These are the ones that are going to be applying many of the concepts that you are learning throughout this entire chapter and you're building up that knowledge to be able to complete this activity or experiment. So these are the ones that you really want to make sure you do with your child so that the information they're learning about in this chapter becomes real to them as they are able to do it with their hands. During the Teach for Understanding, you can talk about the procedure and the conclusions, making sure that things worked the way that your child expected them to, or talking about why they didn't work the way that it, your child had expected it to. There is a note here about an assessment. There is a rubric that you could use to grade this activity. These rubrics are in the back of your book on the Teacher Toolkit CD that we'll look at in just a minute. So this is an activity lesson that would be built into your student textbook. And now I'm going to flip back to the appendix. So back here in the appendix, we have a few things that we can look through, like the Bible action truths, Bible promises, and a section on explaining the gospel. We also have our materials list. So the Bible promises and the Bible action truths are words or phrases that you might find throughout the year in Science 6. And they might be words that you want to have a deeper conversation about with your child. So in the back of your TE, you actually have a list of these biblical words with verses that reference back to what these words mean. And we can have a conversation about what the Bible says about these topics. So that is listed in the back in your appendix. There's the Bible promises. There's also a section here about explaining the gospel. And then we have a materials list. So this list is in alphabetical order, and I would be looking for the column of the chapter I'm in. So I was looking at chapter 8 a few minutes ago. So I would look in the 8 column to find out what I need. And I see that there's an X in this spot that says aluminum foil. I need several small appliances. I need C or D batteries. And I need batteries of various sizes. And I would be able to make my list of what I need for my experiments based on this materials list at the back of the book. And then that way I don't have to flip through all the different lessons in that chapter to make sure I've got all the items I need. I'm gonna go ahead now and flip to the very back of the book. This is your teacher toolkit CD. On this CD, you will find your activity manual answer key. You will also find some diagrams and game banks. You have instructional aids 
You have a material list that you could print off and then write on. You have your quizzes and answer keys. So if there's a quiz that you're supposed to give during one of your lessons, the quizzes and answer keys for those are on this teacher toolkit CD. There are also the rubrics. So for those activities and experiments we have that need a rubric to grade, those rubrics are on the CD as well. And then there's some information here about science fair. So this is your science six teacher edition book. This is the science six student textbook. The cover of this book is smaller than a sheet of paper and it's about an inch in thickness. I'm going to flip this book open to chapter eight, which is where we were looking today in our teacher edition. So these are the pages that your student will be reading from. This is that built-in experiment that we talked about, and then they would have the correlating page and their activity manual to be able to do all their writing on that page. You might notice as I'm flipping through that there are lots of pictures and different charts or graphs. There's also lots of bold words. These are all our vocabulary words for this chapter. Here's another experiment that is built into this chapter. There's also these quick check questions every few pages to make sure they're understanding the main ideas that they're reading about in their textbook. And then each chapter ends with one of these review pages that will give a list of all the vocabulary words for the chapter, the key ideas, and then there's this little section called solve the problem that they would be thinking about how they would solve the problem and it would be related to whatever the chapter is that they're focusing on at that point in time. In the back of this book, we do have a glossary. So if there were words that your child didn't remember, they could flip back to the glossary and make sure they understand the definition of those words. So that is the student textbook for Science 6. This is the Science 6 activity manual. So this is the book where my child would be writing and reinforcing the concepts we're learning about in our student textbook. Each chapter begins with a looking ahead page. This is going to be a brief introduction of all the different topics they're going to be learning about within this new chapter. So this actually goes with chapter eight, which is what we were looking at in our student textbook a few moments ago. We had that experiment that was built into our student textbook. This is the page in the student activity manual that they would be filling in to go along with that experiment. So they would be writing out their hypothesis, their procedure, and then any data they collected during the experiment, along with writing out their conclusions. We have multiple study guides built into the activity manuals. And you might also notice down here at the bottom of the page, it says chapter eight, lesson 97, pages 188 through 91 and 194 through 97. Those page numbers are actually the student textbook pages. So if your child couldn't remember an answer, they could go back and look in their student textbook page to find that answer and then finish their review. Here is another activity that is built directly into the student textbook. And then they would be doing all their recording on these pages in the activity manual. Each chapter finishes with this thinking it through type page. This page will review us on a lot of the key concepts, but they're gonna to have to put some thought into answering these questions and making sure they can explain it, which is a great way to practice right before a test. So if my child was studying for the chapter eight test, we would use these think it through pages. We would also be using these study guides. And then in our student textbook, we had that list of vocabulary words right at the end of the chapter, along with our key concepts. And we would review all of that information. And then we would be ready for that chapter eight exam. So this is the student activity manual. The last thing we're gonna look through today is the activity manual answer key. There's no instruction in this book. This is purely answers to go along with the student activity manual. And this would provide a quick way for you to check your child's work, 
to make sure they understand what they were doing in their workbook and if they're understanding the concepts that they're learning about in their student textbook. So that is the activity manual answer key. The only thing I didn't show you that does come in the Science 6 textbook kit is a test packet and a test answer key packet. Inside of the test packet, you will find a chapter test for every chapter in Science 6. If you have any questions about anything you saw today in this Science 6 video, please feel free to reach out to your local Homer Spy Precept consultant. We would love to answer any of the questions that you may have. I hope you have a great day.